We're going, to, we're going to take a look at how the brain functions in general. And so we're going to start pretty general and then we're going to go narrow. And the first thing that you might want to think about is what problem exactly is the brain wrestling with? And the major problem is that reality is so complicated. It has so many layers and so many interconnected causal links that it's complex beyond comprehension. And that's a big problem. I mean, you think about all the subatomic complexity, that's, that's a horrible thing. Then there's the complexity at the atomic level, and that's, you know, pretty overwhelming. And then there's the molecular level, which makes the atomic level look simple. And then there's all the comp exceedingly complex structures that emerge out of the molecular level, especially in living organisms. So that would be roughly at the organ level of existence, you know, and then there's you as a totality with your brain, which is, and the brain is so much more complex than everything else in the universe that it's not even in the same category. So there are estimates, for example, by Gerard Edelman, that there are more connections in your brain, more patterns of connections in your brain than there are subatomic particles in the universe. So, you know, that's one major league complex thing and there's lots of them around and, you know, they're all integrated into families and then, uh, you know, roughly tribal groupings, some of which get large enough to be nations and then that's all embedded inside of some biological system and so on and so forth, all the way out to the limits of the cosmos. I mean, this is one complicated place and, you know, your job in, in large part is to understand it, but also not to become overwhelmed by it, because you have to simplify it down to the point where you can sort of think about one thing and do one thing. And so you have to screen all of that out so that the complexity doesn't overwhelm you when you're attempting to do anything, anything simple, even to look at yourself in the mirror, which is also a very complicated thing to do. Part of the problem your brain is, is always facing is, what can I ignore? And the answer to that is, well, you need to ignore almost everything. And, and that's, a, that's a problem because of course, it's not always obvious what it's okay, what's okay for you to ignore. You know, and that changes on you suddenly too, because you, know, because you have imperfect knowledge, you may think something's irrelevant and it turns out to be of critical importance. It's a deadly, it's a deadly, deadly difficult problem. And so, one of the ways that we solve this is we're actually pretty blind to, to, to almost everything, you know. Our sensory input is limited by our physiological limitations, certainly. So there's like, in terms of vision, we only see a very small uh, little slice of the whole electromagnetic spectrum. And it's the same with sounds. And, you know, we can only touch things that are basically within our reach. And so that limits things substantially. And, and then there are also things we can't detect, like we're not very good at detecting, um, like we don't have the same ability that say, uh, is it platypuses and some fish can detect electromagnetic disturbances around them on their skin. And like there's senses that we don't have. So we're, ze we're narrowed a fair bit by what it is that we're able to perceive. Um, and we're actually narrowed in what we can perceive far more than anybody ever guessed. What's very strange about your visual system and your sensory systems are like this in, in, in uh, you know, all your sensory systems are like this, is that you have a tiny little point of focus where the information is rich. And that's partly because, so the center of your eye is the fovea and it's most densely uh, it's most densely packed with cells, but more importantly, each of the cells in your fovea, which is the very center of your vision, you can tell when someone's pointing their fovea, fovea at you, because then you, ha you, know, you have the sense that they're looking at you, and human beings are unbelievably good at figuring out when someone is pointing their fovea at you. Uh, we, we, can, we can detect eye, um, what would you call it, deviation from direct gaze, with an accuracy that's absolutely remarkable. Now each of those little cells in the fovea is connected, each of the one cells is connected to like 20,000 cells at the first level of the hierarchy of the visual system. And so the reason that your whole eye isn't fovea is because your head would have to be this big to manage it. So, you know, what's evolved is sort of a compromise is that in the center of your vision, it's, the center of your vision is very, very detailed. And, and then what you do is you zip that center around, like snap, 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 and your brain sort of makes a, a amalgamated picture out of all those little snapshots. 
and you know, then it weaves it together so it seems to you like it's a continuous, what, a continuous movie of consciousness, even though it's really not. And then the sides of your eyes, the periphery of your eyes, well, they don't have the same potency as the fovea. And so they, they kind of play a triage game. It's like, okay, I can't see, if I'm looking straight ahead, I can't see everything. What might I use as an indication that I should move my gaze from where I'm looking to somewhere else? And one answer to that is movement. So the periphery is pretty good at picking up movement. And so often if you see movement in the periphery, then you'll move your foveal vision to where the movement was. And then, you know, then you can keep track of what's changing. So what your brain sort of assumes is that when you're looking at something, everything else is irrelevant. And it's also, it also sort of fades into the background. And so the rule for perception is don't pay attention to anything that isn't directly relevant to the desired outcome. Now exactly how you calculate what you can pay attention to and what you can't, that's very complicated. It's, I mean, you build that knowledge bit by bit over time and, and, and you can be wrong about it too. But um, so, so the old idea was, you know, well, first of all, that you were very much conscious of the environment period, which you're not. And then the second idea was, well, while you're being conscious of the environment, if anything changes radically, you will definitely focus your attention on it. And then, and what turned out to be the case is, well, you're not very conscious of the environment and radical things can happen and you won't notice them unless they interfere with what you're doing. So something that emerges that interferes what, with what you're doing that you don't expect, you will in instantly orient towards and concentrate on. So it isn't anomaly or novelty that attracts your attention. It's the unexpected disruption of the relationship between your behaviors and the desired outcome of those behaviors. And that's a much narrower claim. Only pay attention to things that make you fail. It's something like that. We also tend to like to think that people's problems are primarily psychological, but they're not. And that, that's one thing you learn quite rapidly as a clinician is that most of the time people don't come to you because they have mental illness. They come to you because they have a complexity management problem. Their lives have got out of hand on them and they don't know how to get them back under control. And so all sorts of things can do that. And then of course that can make you anxious or depressed. It can trigger all sorts of illnesses. But the fundamental problem is still that things have got beyond you. And that actually has a psychophysiological cost that isn't merely psychological. You have a limited amount of capacity from, from, from a resource perspective to deal with emergent complexity. You just, there's just not enough of you. you just, You'll, you'll exhaust your psychophysiological resources if you get into a situation that's too complex.